Welcome to the very first episode of Lenovo Presents Smarter AI, transforming India in association with ETCIO and Times Techies. I'm your host, Gautam Srinivasan, and over the next four episodes, we'll be diving deep into the fascinating world of artificial intelligence, its opportunities, challenges, and the ways it's transforming industries. Today, we're kicking things off with an exciting topic, harnessing the power of AI for transforming organizations. We're privileged to have two incredible experts with us today. First, we have Amit Parmeshwara, the Asia-Pacific leader of the AI practice at Lenovo. Amit has been at the forefront of leveraging AI to deliver meaningful business transformations. Amit, great to have you on board. Thank you very much, Gautam. Glad to be here, especially talking about a topic close to my heart, which is transforming organizations with AI. And we're expecting lots of themes to come out. Our second guest is Abhik Chatterjee, MD and partner at BCG. Abhik, great to have you on board as well. Thank you, Gautam. Uh, and extremely privileged to be uh, part of this uh, series. Thank you. Well, it's our pleasure to host the both of you, especially for a topic which is now center stage in a lot of boardroom discussions and, of course, for the average consumer as well. So let's talk about that evolution. Amit, let me get you on board first uh, to comment on this evolution that we've seen from purely theoretical perspectives to delivering actual business outcomes and transformation. How has AI become such a game changer as of today? Take us through that evolution. Sure, sure. Again, um, as we have been talking, it's very important to look at the past evolution to look at the future as well, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, in that context, I need to start with a quote wrongly attributed to Albert Einstein, <laughs> where he said that computers are fast, accurate, but stupid, stupid, whereas human beings are slow, inaccurate, but brilliant. Both of them working to the, together can create unimaginable things. Mm -hmm. Now, AI is not just a computer. It is more than that. It is a general purpose technology, which means that it can really uh, have bigger impact on the industries, on the economy. It can enable innovations uh, downstream as well. Mm -hmm. That's one reason why it's a game changer. Second reason is that AI has cognitive capabilities. It has sensory powers as well. And more importantly, AI can imagine and create ideas that do not exist. Mm -hmm. right? And all of these capabilities together with availability of data as well as computing power will make AI a game changer. All right, let's get a bird's eye view of what's the impact on different industries through AI. Uh, Abhik, your perspective, because every industry brings with it some unique aspects. So in terms of the impact that AI is having across industries, what's the BCG perspective on this? So let me start with uh, perhaps three points. Number one, 98% of companies today are doing something with AI, but it is surprising that only 26% are really leading their race. And out of which there are 4% which we would say are really the ones who are changing the game with AI, correct? Now, point number two, if you look at industries and sectors do matter significantly, right? Uh, our initial hypothesis on AI was it is going to add significant amount of value as it comes to uh, enterprise functions uh, as well as back office. But what we have seen is 62% of the value is really being generated from the core functions. So you look at transformation across uh, sales and marketing, across operations, uh, across R&D, those are the places wherein the shift has been massive, but the real unlock is coming as you're applying it to the core of your business, right? Now coming to sectors, and obviously we have seen it, I mean, pandemic was a, was a big reason why technology got a fillip, and then obviously with the advent of Gen AI, that was another move, but we have seen uh, industries such as Software, obviously the fintechs, uh, significant amount of uh, industries within the consumer goods, mm. uh, partly insurance and bank banking, they have uh, led the, if I would say, the journey on AI. The other industry that I would really want to call out, which has made rapid strides, and I think it's a, it's a massive fillip to what India has been doing, has been AI in the government mm. and AI in the public sector. I mean, today, uh, as an Indian citizen, you can take a flight, without carrying your wallet. You mm. can just keep your phone. With Digi Yatra, you can check in, you can pay with your UPI, you can travel wallet-less. I don't think in any other country in the world you can do that. It's fostering multiple revolutions and, as and the India stack Absolutely. Uh, and and uh, it, is a, it is a 
uh, it is a point in time wherein industry lines are also blurring because mm. today a company which was earlier uh, let's say a metals or a mining company can now dream of uh, uh, getting into another space much easily one word that you've mentioned generative ai that's my cue for the next question because gen ai is indeed the new beacon for transformation so amit let me get in your perspective on the fact that while generative ai has been a buzzword we are seeing chatbots we are seeing content generation we are seeing predictive analytics and of course the applications keep going on and on we are seeing increased use of of generative ai from lenovo's perspective how is lenovo approaching the use of generative ai to create meaningful transformations for businesses in one word it is a multi dimensional approach i would say hmm. because ai in general and generative ai specifically is a multi dimensional phenomena so our approach has to be multi dimensional as well hmm. so our strategy is what we call as hybrid ai uh, for generative ai computing infrastructure is the bedrock hmm. you need powerful computers powerful data center to trying to predict for the inferencing everything so we have the industry leading computing infrastructure starting from servers storage workstations even the ipc mm -hmm. that's the starting point now on top of that we have various foundational and horizontal uh, platforms that will enable organizations to create generative ai applications right for example we have a platform to create uh, ai agents mm -hmm. very seamlessly right uh, that's that's uh, one thing we also have uh various templates various use cases industry use cases we created various uh, industry domain specific use cases for generative ai as well that mm. will serve as accelerators it's growth in clicks right exactly exactly right uh, that's very critical and the next important thing what we are doing is we are investing in various startups mm. uh, that are working on generative ai because as we all know uh, the real innovation actually is coming from the startup world so the agility we, exactly agility innovation uh, fast thinking whatever you can call that way right so uh, we want to bring those innovations to our customers our ecosystem as well mm. so for example we invested in a generative ai based startup uh, that uh, that uses generative ai for knowledge management and also create domain specific small language models it's like having your own ipl team exactly exactly that, that's better isn't it so so uh, we are creating the ecosystem of startups we are bring those innovations to the customers right mm. another important aspect of generative ai is responsible ai mm. right we are very very serious in our approach for uh, responsible ai our responsible ai committee and the framework is is uh, based on six pillars across ethics integrity transparency bias all of them really mm. right and we also committed to unesco's unesco's guidance on ethical usage of ai all right let's look at the broader applications of generative ai across industries and abik your perspective because as you cited ai in general when i look at insurance one great example i saw was switch on switch off insurance came about during the pandemic enabled by predictive analytics and ai but when we look at generative ai and its applications whether it's healthcare whether it's manufacturing whether it's bfsi what are you seeing in the market See, generative AI. Um, I mean, it started with a huge hype, mm. correct? I mean, it was uh, it was easily tom tommed as let's say the next big thing. Uh, it settled down a bit. Mm. Uh, what we have also seen is uh, there are certain let's say certain parts of the business and certain industries that have made a significant and a massive move with generative AI. So you look at uh, healthcare um, and specifically uh, R&D as a space, mm. your ability to do drug, drug discovery, your ability to do clinical trials, the entire data around that, mm. what would take, uh, I mean, there's been easily about a 25 to 30%, let's say time crunch in terms of what you can get. Similar, for example, if you, if you again, if I take the R&D model, mm. uh, the ability to apply AI and generative AI together in, for example, for automakers to crunch the time that it takes to launch new models is significantly high. Mm. Then I shift to, for example, the entire space around insurance and banking, correct? Uh, a big part of the cost today for insurance bankers, be it global or local, is your entire front-end customer management. Mm. So your call center cost, your cost of leads, etc. I think the ability for generative AI to A, manage that entire, uh, entire spectrum, your ability to get into marketing content delivery and run that entire piece at a pace that is well bounding mm. is is amazing. I mean, 
uh, it it reminds me of the World Cup final that India won, or, or even if I take back, actually the 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 gold medal that uh, Neeraj won in uh, uh, in in Javelin. Javelin. Uh, he won it at five eighteen p.m. India time. Within about five minutes, uh, uh, Swiggy launched its uh, uh, go <laughs> for gold. A marketing board. piece. Correct, correct. So your ability to react uh, to in moment things mm. and offer personalized. Uh, things at a moment when the country is cherishing is just huge, right? Absolutely. I mean, A, you're celebrating together and it's also a great business opportunity. Mm. I would also want to make a third point, which is, and to me, whilst there is AI for business, uh, there is a significant unlock, which is AI for good. Mm. And in, in, in that space, the entire value that we are seeing in terms of, let's say, citizen services, uh, not only convenience, but just for example, today, AI is becoming an important bedrock for climate change. Mm. You just can't achieve, let's say, the, the, the bold targets we have set for 2050, 2070 without application of data and AI, mm. correct? So be it climate change, be it, for example, advances uh, in, in forestry, agri, and, and a range of other, let's say, functions that have been data dark or data dry, I think with the advent of AI have, have seen uh, a significant burst and we will see that continue to happen. All right. Let's look at what are the lessons to be learned though for successful AI adoption. And Amit, I'll start with you because as with any transformative technology, adopting AI, of course, comes with its own set of challenges. As Abhik mentioned, there is the hype phase and then there is the reality phase where we actually see a lot of yeah. innovation and outcomes being delivered. So from your experience, what are some of the biggest lessons that players can learn from those who have successfully embraced AI? I think I can, I can uh, see three uh, learnings really. Hmm. One is that executives really need to understand the deeper impact AI has on their organization. Mm. What I mean is that uh, AI can change, can, can impact your structure, your policies, your people, uh, processes, everything. Right? Just to give an example, if you implement a product recommendation system for the salesperson uh, that will give the live product recommendation to sell, mm. right? So uh, that's the easier thing to do. However, you have to also look at changing the impact of that on your sales structure, incentive policies, mm. right? Uh, Salesforce morale, Salesforce training. That's a very cetera. important point because exactly. while you are enhancing the output of your frontline sales, right. you also need to enhance incentivization of your exactly. frontline sales to exactly. adopt. It changes everything, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why the, uh, the the recognition of the deeper impact AI has on the organization is very, very critical for transformation mm -hmm. because that's, that's what transformation is all about, mm -hmm. right? That's the number one point. Second is executives also need to identify, more importantly, anticipate the resistance they will face in the organization, right? <laughs> and the resistance can be because of many reasons. Organization structure uh, may not be supporting the transformation, uh, the people skills, or because of the cognitive reasons where the employees are uh, have the fear of unknown or probably not trained well enough. Could be because of the operational reasons where the processes, people are not ready, right? Mm. I think it's someone, perhaps Bill Gates or someone who said that, you cannot apply a great AI to a weak process and expect a great result, mm. right? So that's the second point. Uh, anticipate the resistance and address them. That's very important. Final point is the indirect cost. Mm. There were research that has shown that when it comes to implementing technology, the indirect cost could be even four times the actual expected direct cost, mm. right? And if the executives miss this indirect cost, they will face disappointment later when they look at the ROI. Many a times the projects, AI projects will be abandoned in the middle because the because of the cost escalations. All this because of the indirect cost. Mm. Right? So that's three things, three learning. Three lessons that we've learned. In fact, the most important point that you mentioned is the amplifying effect of AI. Exactly. It's similar to Captain America, yeah. where if you take the serum, if there is good in you, you become Captain yeah. America. Yeah. If there's bad in you, you become a villain. So you exactly. have to approach AI from a similar perspective to make sure, sure. that the, sure. it's amplifying the good sure. and not the bad elements sure. of your sure. system. All right, from three lessons, let's see what are the three mistakes organizations should should avoid when embarking on their AI journey. Abhi, what's your perspective on this? Three mistakes to avoid. I think I'll expand that to four. But right. uh, but before that, uh, 
uh, at BCG, uh, out of the work that we do for a lot of our, let's say, large businesses or governments, uh, we follow a simple rule. And we have seen uh, uh, there is a 10-20-70 rule that we call, wherein 10% of the, is the focus on the algorithm, 20% uh, on tech, and 70% on people and process. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, if you look at, uh, and if you look at all of the programs across AI, digital, and lines are blurring, uh, we see globally one out of five programs succeeding and India less than one out of six programs succeeding, correct? Uh, and there are four, four factors that, uh, that, that are really uh, kind of some of the bigger stumbling blocks. Uh, firstly, I think there's a massive expectation that AI is the panacea and it will solve for all uh, uh, problems, uh, let's say, across an organization. Um, what we really need to do is find out what is the problem you are trying to solve, hmm. correct? Align the right value pool and then follow that through with the right investment and process. I think there is no substitute to that. So that is point number one. Point number two is what we have seen is many times it is just treated as a pure technology project. Hmm. Um, uh, the need of business to actually step forward, drive it as their mandate is important. Yesterday, people would say AI was not my business. Hmm. But tomorrow, if you don't have AI, you will not have a business, correct? Uh, point number three, uh, India, at least in India, we have seen a massive hyper jugad around how we treat tech and data. Mm. So being extremely pilot happy, we try and cook up something, but we don't look at the longer view of what and the impacts that will have on technology, scalability, cost, many of the things that uh, Ajit did mention. And last but not the least, I think there is a fundamental lever in AI, which is around human and the people at the center of it. We as organizations are finding it very difficult to firstly afford good quality talent and then invest on that ahead of time. It is, it is being treated as an afterthought. And then when you're trying to scale up AI and really because scale creates value, mm -hmm. pilot makes you happy, correct? But when you're trying to scale, you really don't have the muscle that needs to carry it through. And then there are gaps that get created and the entire momentum gets lost. Mm. So overall, these are the four things that we believe kind of differentiates the best from the rest. And, and, and we would be very, uh, let's say, uh, look forward to the fact that where India as a country, because of its growth in tech and overall Asia as a region as well, would, would beat the odds of making AI successful at a much faster rate than what the West can do. Absolutely. And the host of use cases that both India and Asia present and how AI and technologies are solving for those use cases makes me believe that the region is going to be the innovation incubator for the world. And as we look forward, I'm excited to see the possibilities, especially when it comes to scale. The idea being that if you plan your scale journey well enough, AI can be an augmentative power. Makes me excited as to who are going to be the next Goliaths, the Davids of today, who are going to be the next Biggie. Well, thank you so much, Amit and Abhik, for sharing your perspectives and, of course, expertise on this topic. And for our listeners, thank you so much for joining us. Stay tuned for the next episode where we'll explore how AI is revolutionizing a host of industries. Until then, this is your host, Gautam Srinivasan, signing off from Smarter AI, Transforming India. See you next time.